In an ever-changing world, Life Changes Network presents the authentically entertaining voice of truth and inspiration. This is Life Changes with Filippo, with the always unforgettable, ever insightful conversations that captivate our fascination and insatiability for the inspiring moments of real life journeys, as we, as one, strive for higher planes of existence and a better understanding of our true selves and the world in which we live, always remembering Life Changes. This is radio like you've never felt before. Good for all and all for good. And now your host, the MC, the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. And this is Life Changes with Filippo here on the PBS Radio Network. Today, our guest is Christina Yor. Now, uh, this is this is interesting because she has written a book, and it's called The Audacity of Self-Love, Voyage of the Self-Made Woman. And I'll actually, let me say why I, I think this is interesting until we come back from the break. Let me tell you a little bit about her so you'll know who we're going to be talking to and what we're going to be talking about. Christina Fior has enhanced her innate intuitive abilities with 35 years of practice in metaphysics, quantum healing, and the interrogative, inter, inter, oh, in, excuse me, integrative health sciences. That's actually a word that's being used a lot lately. And um, one of these days, I think we're going to, we actually did talk about it in a show a while back, um, but I'm feeling it's going to come up again, maybe even in this interview. So uh, 35 years of practice in metaphysics, quantum healing, and the integrative health sciences. She has counseled hundreds of women, integrating her skills as a wellness coach, esthetician, theta healing, Hollow Dynamics practitioner, palm and handwriting analyst, and through the insightful and compassionate nature of her work, she is affectionately known by her clients as the Love Whisperer. Now, I love what she has written in her book, period, but uh, her mission statement is this. I have a burning desire to remind women how magical they are. I'm here to help women heal their core wounds, rise above the ashes of the former self, and reignite their relationship with their soul's original blueprint. Evidently, she is dedicated to this, and we are glad she is. And we are going to be talking to her about her dedication, about her book, and about so many of the things she brings up in the book that are so important. We'll be doing that after this. I am Filippo Voltaggio, and this is Life Changes with Filippo. Clean water is not enough. Reverse osmosis, distilled water, and most bottled waters are devoid of naturally occurring minerals. They are acidic, unstructured, and hard to absorb, and rob minerals from the body. Ionways ionizers produce a super abundant supply of powerful antioxidants in each glass. Ionized water has a reduced molecular cluster size and a negative charge, hydrating you up to six times better. Water from an Ionways ionizer will help you restore your body to its natural pH balance, boosting your vitality. And ionized water more effectively flushes acidic toxins from within your body. Drink the healthiest water available today. Ionways Water Systems, their water changes everything. To learn more about Ionways Water Systems and how you can own one today, visit our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our sponsor page. 
true performance takes more than just working out. Every day we demand more from our body. But what does your body demand? Hunger is not your body's call for empty calories. It's your body asking for nutrients it's lacking. It's time to reward your body with Boku Superfood. Made from the world's finest organic ingredients, vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and essential trace nutrients. All developed naturally and organically from nature's most nutrient-dense foods. Boku Superfood is quite possibly the best thing you can feed your body. So listen to your body. Reward it with pure, raw, beautiful food. Boku Superfood. What is the one thing that every man, woman, and child have in common? Life changes. Are you experiencing change at home, at work, at school, or in other areas of your life? Are you looking to make a change, maybe a new job or place to live? How about getting in on a conversation that matters? Join host Filippo on the top-rated BBS radio network show, Life Changes with Filippo, live every Monday night at 7 p.m., for more information, visit lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O.com. Well, that's Filippo, and this is Filippo. Actually, that was Mark, and, and this is Filippo. And Mark's here in the studio, and we are going to be having such a great conversation on this subject. I just know it. And, you know, uh, I have to say that I have been reading this book. Now, I don't have a chance nor the time to read all the books that, that we get uh, in the studio for all the shows that we do. I, I do my best to at least look as much as I can. But with Christina's book, I've been looking a little more than usual. And and I have to say, do, do, do I hope you all remember this commercial that, that was on TV years ago. And the tagline was, strong enough for a man, but made for a woman. I, I, I'm saying it in a man's voice. I don't know. It might have been a woman who said it. But that's the thing. Strong enough for a man, but made for a woman. And so I, I thought, hmm, here's a book that might be strong enough for a man, but it's made for a woman. And so what's wrong with a man reading it? Maybe maybe there's something in it I can learn from it. And I have. And I have. And it's interesting because a couple of the things that Christina touches on, I, I mean, I saw happen to men this week alone that, that I noted. And I think is, is really interesting. And I look forward to talking to Christina about it. Uh, here Here's an example. Okay. So I was at an event on uh, Sunday, I think it was, with a, a, a group of people, and it was a, a mixed crowd, and young and old, and it was it was at a, it was at a club actually, and it was an event held at a club. But in any event, there was a man that I was sitting near who, when this actor came by him, and the man that I know who I was sitting near, he was putting on a, an event. And when the actor came by him, somebody introduced him and said, hey, this actor would be good for your event. And he said, oh, this would be great. This is what we're doing. And the actor says, I'm interested in that. I'd be happy to come. And so the actor says, give me your card. I'll have my agent or assistant contact you. And the man said, I don't have any cards with me. I know. I'm such an effing idiot. I left the house without cards. My wife, when she finds out, is going to beat me. And I'm listening to this conversation, and, and when the actor walked away, because it was uncomfortable for all of us standing there, and, and I, when the, uh, the, the actor walked away and I said, I don't know you to be an effing idiot. He said, well, I forgot my cards at home. And I said, you forgot your cards at home means you forgot your cards at home. And next time, now that you realize you need them every time you're out, because you never know what's going to happen, you're not going to forget your cards at home. Or you're going to remind yourself. But that doesn't mean you're an effing idiot. You're right. You're right, actually. You're right, he said. Okay, example number two. I was with a brand new client who doesn't know my ways yet, and I don't know his, but we're learning. And so I had asked him to do a task. He did the task, and I said, hey, look at this. Or I don't remember exactly how I said it. And he said, what? What did I do wrong? Immediately, he went to, I'm wrong. And I said, no, you didn't do anything wrong, but you might want to consider doing something like this another time. Oh, I like that better. But do you see how it wasn't wrong? And so we make ourselves effing idiots, and we make ourselves wrong Maybe because we're used to it. Uh, last example, I was with uh, an actor, actually, uh, this week as well. Um, and 
I was with him when this beautiful woman came up to him who, unbeknownst to him, happened to be a producer here in Hollywood. You never know who you're going to run into. That. So we were at an event and she came up to him and she says, you've got to be an actor. Now, he's a very handsome man and he's a very good actor. But his answer to this woman was, well, I haven't done anything that you've seen me in. Already, he puts himself down. He turns her off. He shows no no uh, confidence, and the conversation died right there. And maybe even his career, for all we know. So the things that Christina talks about for women, this is only one of the aspects, but they are so important for men. And I think this would be a good book for men to read for themselves or to uh, to learn about women or learn what women are learning. Uh, and uh, And so I encourage that. Uh, before we bring Christina on, Mark, I know you have something to say on the subject that you got to get out. Well, obviously, we're going to dig into it at, uh, at at the end of it in the producer's wrap. But yeah, I, you know, I think the, the I, well, yeah, I have a history uh, like we all do of being attached to my story and and playing victim for a while, and that victimization certainly led to the self loathing and self criticism and and the lack of. Of, of a self-approval and, and acceptance and all these other things. And you realize that that, when, and I look back and I realize how much that set the tone for everything I did, yeah. my relationships, yeah. my day, yeah. you know, it, it, it all comes from within. And, and it's so hard to see that when you're in that place. And, and so to be able to, yeah. to look at it like Christine uh, says and, 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 you know, look back at it is a, as an asset. She talks exactly about that. So why don't we bring her on and get right to the meat of this. Again, Christine Fior has enhanced her innate intuitive abilities for 35 years of practice in metaphysics, quantum healing, and the integrative health sciences. She has counseled hundreds of women, integrating her skills as a wellness coach, esthetician, theta healing, hollow dynamics practitioner, palm and handwriting analyst, and now she is the author of, I love this title, uh, Self Love, the, uh, or The Audacity of Self Love, Voyage of the Self Made Woman. Welcome, Christina, to the show. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you great. Wonderful. Thank you for having me on the show. Welcome, and uh, we're glad to have you, and we're glad to have this conversation and from such a strong woman's perspective. Uh, tell me, uh, what led you to putting these words on paper and getting this, this message out there? Well, you know, this book really reflects the revelations of my own life journey as I, too, was challenged for many years with love deprivation through a series of experiences that I had in my life and the accumulated beliefs that I had as a result of my experiences. And so I had to, you know, I came to a place in my life where I literally had to unwind the coil of the wounds and the beliefs accumulated, you know, throughout my life, and then find the way, find the formula for transforming them uh, by engaging my actions, my languaging, and my feeling world into a whole new paradigm. And so subsequently, I've then transformed my field of attraction in many wonderful ways. So. In this book, I share the wisdom that I've gained from decades of working with women as an intuitive healer, as you mentioned, and all of the other modalities that, that I uh, have in my, my little magical pouch. And I've been privileged to work with hundreds of women who have shared with me their unique and amazing life stories. I am continually amazed. I've also, you know, counsel couples as well, which is, is an extremely insightful uh, privilege for me. But the thing that is so amazing is I see people walk into my office and they're, you know, they look really pulled together and, and, and then they unwind their story for me. And I'm absolutely amazed at the shock and the trauma that people have had and thus the accumulated wounds and beliefs that have driven their life as they've moved forward. And so I really helped them to uncover these wounds. And so I felt after so many years that it was fitting to put a book together that would serve sort of like a compassionate friend who has listened to the ache of the soul and has some solutions. Wow. And, and you not only give uh, solutions in the book, but you also give examples of some women who 
who live in, in as you would say, in the audacity of self love. Uh, can you just real quickly before we break to a commercial, give some of the example, the names of the women that you mention in the book? Absolutely. Well, the first woman that I mentioned in the book is Kathy Buckley. Uh, Kathy is a deaf comedian, and uh, she has endured so many things that I couldn't possibly put in my book. But uh, a couple of them is that she, uh, you know, when she was in, I think, the second grade, she was misdiagnosed. And she had to literally go through two or three years of school before they knew she was deaf. So they thought that she was, um, you know, had a learning disability. And so they right. I, I actually, Christina, I'm interrupting you. I actually know Christina Buckley, and, and I, I love what you have written about her. I'm going to have to break for a commercial. I was just hoping to get a, a couple okay. names thrown out. But um, why don't we do that when we come back right after this? We're talking to Christina Fior about the book, The Audacity of Self-Love, Voyage of the Self-Made Woman. I am Filippo Voltaggio, and you're listening to Life Changes with Filippo. We'll be back right after this. A healthy new you is on its way, and it starts with Laminine. Laminine is a natural, synergistic superfood that contains most known vitamins, important trace minerals, all eight essential amino acids, and other nutritional elements. Laminine is nature's most perfect food and the perfect combination of life-giving sustenance sourced from land, sea, and plants. The key ingredient in laminine is a normal adaptogen called fibroplast growth factor, which helps to create a balance or normalization and aids in restoring the body to its natural state of homeostasis. Regular use of laminine has been known for reducing the signs of aging by giving you healthier skin, decreasing the effects of stress, increasing physical, mental, and emotional strength, increasing libido, and it's also been believed to elevate serotonin levels, thus improving mood, aiding in brain function, and increasing alertness and focus, all while developing an overall sense of well-being. Are you ready for the healthy new you? For more information, email trylaminine.now at gmail.com. That's Laminine, L-A-M-A-N-I-N-E. Or call 818-462-6782. That's 818-462-6782. There are self-help seminars costing thousands of dollars guaranteeing miraculous transformations. There are compelling speakers and life-changing weekend experiences where you can walk on fire. They all deliver revelations that guarantee you'll come back for the more expensive revelations filled with even greater wonder next month on Fiji. We get addicted to positive, heartfelt, expensive theater. What we really need is a jumpstart, an awakening, someone who can give us a reminder that everything we need lies within. Through inspiration and practical knowledge, Dorothy Donahue helps people get grounded and motivated, inspired and energized. It's not just words and affirmations and the power of intention. It's a mindset brought about by a tangible, transcendental experience, an audiovisual, physical, spiritual experience that helps us realize we transform ourselves. We get tools to become the conscious co-creators of lives of unlimited potential. Find out more. Go to DorothyDonahue.com. Listen to these words. He would not be beat by forces too fierce for man, woman, or beast. As the going got tougher, his courage increased. It's a little story with a big message, a message that speaks to children of all ages. It's about believing in yourself, overcoming obstacles, and never giving up. It's been called a masterpiece, one of the finest children's books ever written, and a true children's classic. Shadow Stevens has been called Dr. Seuss for the 21st century. His big little book, The Big Galoot, is a story about bullying. Bullying has become an American epidemic, and The Big Galoot talks about it in a way that will touch the heart of a child of four and a grandfather of 104. It's the story of a little boy with size 42 hands, the biggest hands anyone has ever seen, and the kids laugh at him, then the laughter turns mean. They mock him and trip him, and much worse. But throughout it all, Warren Galoot says... I'm a galoot, but I have good luck. You can't get me down. I never give up. A second grader named Chandler said, I thought it was the best funny book I have seen in my life. And we agree. Whoopi Goldberg said, This is a great story. Bravo, Shadow. The Big Galoot is available now as an ebook exclusively on Kindle Fire on Amazon for only $3.98. 
We strongly urge you to get it for your children, your children's children, or as a gift to yourself. Its message speaks to all of us. Have good luck and never give up. Go to Amazon.com and search for The Big Galoot by Shadow Stevens. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. You can hear tonight's show and all our past shows on our archive, which include luminaries such as New York Times bestselling author Gary Zukov, Oscar-nominated actress Mariel Hemingway, Comedy Central's favorite Kyle Cease, international recording artists The Green Children, and radio and TV personality Shadow Stevens. Visit our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com or join our community at lifechangesnetwork.com and email your comments and questions to info at lifechangesnetwork.com or comment via Twitter at I am Filippo and on Facebook at Life Changes with Filippo. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. We're back and our guest is uh, Christina Fior. We've been talking about her book, you can get her book at the audacity of self love.com, which is the title spelled just like it sounds, the audacity of self love.com. Uh, go there. You can get it there. You can learn more about her and what she does and all the people that she's inspiring. Actually, Christina, before we got off, uh, went into commercial, we talked about some of the women that are inspiring other women and Thank you for mentioning Kathy Buckley. I did see her in your book, and I remembered that not only do I know her, but I wanted to have her on the show. So thank you for bringing her back into my consciousness. Who else do you want to did, did, did you mention in the book? Uh, yes, uh, a couple of other people. There's so many, but uh, two of the people that I thought were really representative of those who overcome love de- self love deprivation uh, is another woman named Wowza. She is a 75-year-old ageless woman and a mentor of mine who I greatly respect. So she is another one. And Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, I thought, deserved an honorable mention because she has done so many things for standing up for women's rights, human rights, and uh, just the rights and dignities of all human beings, uh, despite a lot of um, adversity. Yeah, actually, you know, it's interesting because you say despite of a lot of adversity and what I what I'm sensing here, just like the little that you shared of your story at the beginning and and the more that I know from reading the book, it it seems like adversity is the key to becoming one of these inspiring people. Well, you know, I think women in general uh, and and those who embody the the, the feminine principle more and more we realize that we're very cause driven we're master navigators through adversity and really what adversity to me means is anything that is counterintuitive to our own soul's code our, our understanding of what it means to live life fully and brilliantly and in our genius and we have a lot of obstacles that we have to navigate through in this this world today and mm-hmm. uh, and, and that we our, our predecessors have had to navigate through, which we also bear in our DNA. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, actually, I, I just thought of something. During, uh, during my monologue, I, I gave three examples of, of men who self-deprecate themselves. And, and those examples, we could go on and on uh, for days and days because so many people do it. In fact... Uh, we all on, on some level do it because it's, we've, we've had some of that within us from childhood, right? Yes. You know, um, you and I had a little conversation before this show about what it's like to emerge as a, a divine spark, you know, it, it, from the ethers and move into a human body and what that feels like. And oh, right. I love that. At the beginning of your book, you actually talk about that. Go ahead and say and a little bit of that. It's awesome. We come in with our, our innocence, which to me means our inner, inner, inner sense, and we come into this world that's just fraught with really complicated rules of engagement. And uh, we're in this dense platform that our souls are not used to. And so we're having to just navigate through all of these things. And when our souls are in the formative years, which I like to call, we're in a stage of information. In other words, we're in formation of our pending reality. And so every 
every activity, every experience, and every shock and trauma that happens in our life is helping us to form our beliefs and our pending reality. And so, of course, we need to take responsibility of that, but a lot of times this happens when our young, impressionable souls don't really have the discernment or the experience to know what is a healthy and unhealthy behavior. So what happens is we develop these these thoughts and these beliefs uh, that certain behaviors are normal. And so we have sort of what we call a skewed emotional norm. And we start to live our lives that way and attract things that are like life, you know, they become our life laws. And so we attract things that are according to our life laws. And it, you know, we have to learn how to really get back to the core of what we know from our innocence, from our inner sense that we came in with, and to be able to feel through these core beliefs that we've accumulated and really learn how to re-empower ourselves with transforming new beliefs and, and the associated feelings with those. Nice, nice. You know, it's interesting. I, I gave three examples of self-deprecation, and interestingly enough, this very week I also had an example of a male that was uh, completely the opposite of that. Somebody who I know who's very confident, comes across confident, and doesn't say these self-deprecating phrases, on the contrary, is very complimentary to himself and to others. But to others, it seems, who don't know him, that he is arrogant. Now, as we're talking about some of these subjects, um, in the case of a woman who might be like this man that I'm talking about, she, unfortunately, it, it, for some people, is, is considered worse than arrogant. You know, everybody's got their different formula <laughs> of how they relate and how they relate to themselves as well as relate to others. There's lots of dynamics that can be going on. Uh, some people can embody a confidence that seems to be really complimentary to themselves, but it can trigger things in other people. Mm that who don't perhaps embody that confidence, or they could be uh, because they just have not developed that finesse of complimenting themselves while also being honoring to others. So we really need to learn how to better embody what I call our love language, which really doesn't separate us from other people. So that when we compliment ourselves, it really is exemplary of the goodness that we see in others as well. And so that's just a learned skill. You know, I never really thought about it that way. You bring up a really good point because some, uh, it, it, so in a sense, it's it, like, I, I like to say that it almost doesn't matter what a person says. It doesn't, uh, almost doesn't matter the words that are coming out of a person's mouth. It's, it's the intent. It's where they're coming from. So in a sense, when when you have somebody who's who comes across as quote unquote confident, if they're coming, at, if they're trying to be confident from a place of being wounded, then it might come across as arrogance or other things. But if they're coming across confident because they really just are, then it might not be as construed as other as much. Right, and uh, that's a very good point. And, and again, it's who they're in the presence of and what their story is, what their journey is. So, you know, the, the right. journey that I'm on and what I'm learning is to learn how to be confident while also being complimentary to other people at the same time so that they feel included in the, in the celebration of confidence. Mm. Right. And taking those people into... In, in, into account. Now we don't always know what other people's journeys are, but but sometimes, sometimes it's written all over their face, or 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 in what they say and how they act, right? Yes, and I I'm so glad that you brought up the journey of men as well as women, because you know while my primary work has been with women, obviously men go through the very same dynamics that I've outlined in the book. So um, yeah. Confidence is, is a very personal journey that requires real compassionate self-inquiry because there are so many experiences that people have buried deep into the subconscious. Not everyone. There's some people that have been brought up with wonderful families and, you know, they can't remotely relate to this scenario. 
But, you know, but they have other problems. <laughs> they really do, actually. But hold on. We'll talk more about these kinds of things when we come back. And actually, I want to talk to you about false prophets and about health inquiry, which I think, uh, well, anyway, so I don't want to give too much away. We're going to uh, talk about that when we come back. We're talking to Christina Fior and her book, uh, Self Love, uh, Better Yet, The Audacity of Self Love. And we'll be back. Uh, right after this, this is Filippo with Life Changes with Filippo. Today, experience the Quick Fix, a simple process for positive change. Written by Bradley Quick, author, producer, motivational speaker, and host of the award-winning radio talk show, The Quick Fix, with Bradley Quick on CoolChangeRadio.com. Bradley's passion for life is evident in his book, written so you can experience health, find your purpose, and have more effective relationships. Beating insurmountable odds, overcoming death and being paralyzed, Bradley fought his way back so he could help you conquer your struggles. Experience increased health, vitality, passion, and purpose in your life right now with The Quick Fix and read about Bradley's courage, ambition, and determination to live. Whether the issue is your thoughts, your physical body, or you just want to feel better and be happy, The Quick Fix, a simple process for positive change, will change your life. For only $19.95 plus shipping and handling, take positive action now and receive a free guided meditation CD with your order. That's a $20 value free with your order today. Go to BradleyQuick.com. That's Bradley Quick. Dot com. Take control and begin feeling better now. Get the book and free CD now at BradleyQuick.com. Life Changes with Filippo is a premier radio show presented by Life Changes Network, which is a company whose team has dedicated their lives not only to positive change, but to helping others observe and embrace, honor, and even celebrate their own changes thus enabling a more positive, inspired life and helping to create a more positive and inspired world. From everyday people to corporate giants, celebrities, and children, we are here to help and to serve. With heart and experience, we bring our message and positive intent into your home or corporate office and even through appearances on your favorite shows. If you wish to learn more about Life Changes Life Coaching and a private consultation with one of us, corporate event appearances, or if you would like us to appear on your radio or TV shows, visit lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our representation page. And now a public service announcement from E! News anchor Juliana Rancic for the National Italian American Foundation. We're fighters. You know, Italians are fighters. And we have passion. And we take great pride in our work. I truly believe that if I weren't Italian and I didn't have my parents who are the ultimate Italians as role models, I, I really don't believe I would ever have reached my goal. I'm an Italian American and I am so proud of it. The Italian American heritage. Live it. Love it. Celebrate it. Are you achieving your highest potential? Do you know what that looks like? Louise Ashby Life Coaching makes it a mission to bring balance and abundance to every area of your life, giving you the opportunity to do and be all that you've dreamed. Anything is possible if you just believe. Contact author and motivational speaker Louise Ashby for your complimentary session and see if her individualized style is for you. You can email Louise at louiseashby.org. That's L-O-U-I-S-E. A-S-H-B-Y dot org or telephone 323-592-3181. That's Louise at louiseashby.org or telephone 323-592-3181. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. You can hear tonight's show and all our past shows on our archive, which include luminaries such as New York Times bestselling author Gary Zukov, Oscar-nominated actress Mariel Hemingway, Comedy Central's favorite Kyle Cease, international recording artists The Green Children, and radio and TV personality Shadow Stevens. Visit our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com or join our community at lifechangesnetwork.com and email your comments and questions to info at lifechangesnetwork.com or comment via Twitter 
at I am Filippo, and on Facebook at Life Changes with Filippo. That's Filippo, F I L I P P O. That is Filippo. Then this is Filippo, and this is Life Changes with Filippo, and we are talking to Christina Fior about the book The Audacity of Self Love, Voyage of the Self Made Woman. And again, if you want to get the book or learn more about Christina, go to the Audacity of Self Love dot com. Now, Christina, I have a couple more questions for you, but I want you to finish your thought before we went uh, on the break if you wanted to go ahead and do that. You know, I think I'm pretty complete. <laughs> well, good. Okay. Well, then let's talk about because uh, every topic here is loaded. Let's talk about false prophets. What well, do you mean? Yeah, I was having a little bit of fun with that. Um, you know, to me, false prophets don't necessarily represent a deity or a, a person. To me, it represents more of, you know, of negative ideologies that demean us as divine beings having a human experience. Mm. And, uh, you know, we can, one day we can be a false prophet, the next day we can be, you know, a, a beautiful prophet of love. And, uh, you know, we really have to watch what we're channeling, in other words. Uh, the media is a, a great example of e- either the rantings of the false prophets of a negative, mechanized world, or it can give us a, a window into the beauty uh, and wonders of the world that we would otherwise not be aware of. So that's just one example. But the false prophets also can be the rantings of the inner, inner voice within us that is bought mm. into ideas of guilt, shame, unworthiness, yes. competition, and that have taken place in our lives. And then we've been so weighted down by the gravity of all of these things that we you know, start to think that that's reality. And then we start behaving in that way. And so it's time, in my opinion, to kick out the false prophets and to really start to claim our divine inheritance as beautiful, brilliant beings, because we all are. We mm. all are spark from our ultimate creator, and so we all embody within us divine genius. There, there's a new leader in town. And that is the audacious self. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, I like it. You know, I often ask my clients, uh, while they're they're quiet or they're reflecting, I say, "What are you thinking right now?" And 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 when they if they answer uh, about specifically what they're thinking about, like they could say, "Well, I, I'm thinking about when I was little." But w- what what are you thinking right now? And and some of them that have worked with me for a while kind of know where I'm going, and they'll say, "I'm thinking what an idiot I've been to blah 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 blah." And and that is what we're talking about, right? Yes, it's just about learning how to read frame our old experiences and to be able to put that in its proper place and there's multitude of different things of course there's tools in here that I show people how to to shift that through you know really getting in touch with those core beliefs that drive that self-demeaning behavior and then learning how to change things in their languaging and their feeling world and really have a Affirmative action in the positive direction for themselves. Exactly, exactly. So tied to that is what you call a health inquiry or a healthy inquiry. How do we do that? Well, you know, I like to call that a compassionate inquiry as well because I do think that, you know, I'm going to just, you know, reference the woman's journey right now because that's what the book is about. It is that. You know, we are heroic beings. We've navigated through, and forgive me for saying this, a predominantly masculine culture where there's been war and competition and uh, all of these things that have kind of negated the natural feminine essence. And so it's time for us to not only bring in the feminine essence within our own world as women, but men too, so that we can have conscious collaboration and we can have enlightened entrepreneurship and we can bring our gifts forward, and everybody celebrates them rather than competing. So, um, you know, we have to kind of start at the beginning and create a new foundation for ourselves. So one, I think the first way in which we can start to do that is to ask ourselves, what is the quality of my relationship to myself? You know, do I love myself? Can I look myself in the mirror and appreciate it in my God-given qualities rather than flaws? And do I show it in my, my actions and my eating habits, my exercise schedule? the intonation of my voice and my self-expression. And all of these things, you know, we we can just do an inventory. And I have a wonderful 
uh, life assessment check sheet that goes in very in great detail of how to look at your life and really answer these questions with radical self-honesty and then start to roll up your sleeves and get to work and really determine what are the things that I want to embody? What are the things that I want to create? And, you know, I have some self-love rituals in here that really, you know, for instance, the eye-to-eye -eye with the soul where we're actually looking into the eyes of our own self through the mirror and talking to our soul. How often do we do that? <laughs> nice, nice. So there are a lot of little exercises in here that um, are useful for creating that compassionate, healthy self-inquiry and modeling new healthy behavior. Nice. You know, at the beginning of, of that uh, whole, uh, what you just said there, you said, uh, forgive me for saying this, but, uh, and, and frankly, you don't need anybody's forgiveness because at least as I see it, it you were stating fact that it has been uh, masculine uh, dominated society and not necessarily from the best qualities of, of even the masculine aspects. Um, and so this is one of the things I liked about the book. I'm certainly happy to make this a completely uh, female, woman-oriented conversation, although when I spoke to you about it beforehand, you were more of a... Um, you, you, it sounded like you, you, were, you were recognizing that the almost the exact same things needed to be done for men but it's nice for women to have a, a, a book that they can call their own in the moment is that is that partially true well as i said you know my journey uh as a practitioner has primarily been working with women and couples but that has given me a window into a lot of the similar dynamics that men experience having worked with couples and so, uh, as I mentioned to you previously, I do have a few other books up my sleeve, and one is going to be dedicated to men. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll look forward <laughs> to uh, sharing more about that, uh, you know, a little later on. But I'm very appreciative and excited that men are intrigued by this book and actually can utilize some of these principles for themselves and, and maybe see some of the difficult journeys that they've gone through through this book, because. We all do struggle with our masculine and feminine selves. And so um, I think part of the healing of this book is, for men and women, is just bringing rise to that beautiful, wise, feminine principle within all of us. You know, I appreciate that, Christina. I, I've uh, seen some books where it feels like they're doing some women bashing. I've seen uh, books where it's, it feels like they're doing some man bashing. And in your book, you even encourage relationships, healthy relationships with men, where one can inspire the other and help bring that balance within each other and ourselves. Absolutely. Because we're all, you know, we're all intended to be magical beings. And there's nothing more exciting than to look in someone's eyes and see the beauty in that person, which also, by the way, raises our PEA, uh, right. our P brain, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and excites with, uh, in us these love chemicals. So the more love and compassion uh, that we give to others, we, we get so much more back, and it just makes life more fun. Well, thank you for making this book fun to read and for making this, uh, helping this be a fun conversation about uh, something that um, uh, men and women don't uh, up until now uh, necessarily seem to agree, but I'm glad uh, that we're in agreement and that uh, we're having this conversation for others to hopefully learn and grow. And again, the book is The Audacity of Self-Love, Voyage of the Self-Made Woman. And Christina, thank you so much. It's my great pleasure. Thank you for having me, Filippo. <laughs> hope, hope to connect in person soon. And I want to do a shout out to Elizabeth England that brought us together, who also was the editor of your book, was a friend of ours. So uh, shout out to her. And Christina, we'll connect soon. I, I look forward to that. Terrific. Thanks so much. <laughs> All right. This is Filippo with Life Changes. Filippo, we'll be back with our producer's wrap right after this. Listen to these words. He would not be beat by forces too fierce for man, woman, or beast. As the going got tougher, his courage increased. 
It's a little story with a big message, a message that speaks to children of all ages. It's about believing in yourself, overcoming obstacles, and never giving up. It's been called a masterpiece, one of the finest children's books ever written, and a true children's classic. Shadow Stevens has been called Dr. Seuss for the 21st century. His big little book, The Big Galoot, is a story about bullying. Bullying has become an American epidemic, and The Big Galoot talks about it in a way that will touch the heart of a child of four and a grandfather of 104. It's the story of a little boy with size 42 hands, the biggest hands anyone has ever seen, and the kids laugh at him, then the laughter turns mean. They mock him and trip him, and much worse. But throughout it all, Warren Galoot says, I'm a galoot, but I have good luck. You can't get me down. I never give up. A second grader named Chandler said, I thought it was the best funny book I have seen in my life. And we agree. Whoopi Goldberg said, this is a great story. Bravo, Shadow. The Big Galoot is available now as an ebook exclusively on Kindle Fire on Amazon for only $3.98. We strongly urge you to get it for your children, your children's children, or as a gift to yourself. Its message speaks to all of us. Have good luck and never give up. Go to Amazon.com and search for The Big Galoot by Shadow Stevens. There are self-help seminars costing thousands of dollars guaranteeing miraculous transformations. There are compelling speakers and life-changing weekend experiences where you can walk on fire. They all deliver revelations that guarantee you'll come back for the more expensive revelations filled with even greater wonder next month on Fiji. We get addicted to positive, heartfelt, expensive theater. What we really need is a jump start, an awakening. Someone who can give us a reminder that everything we need lies within. Through inspiration and practical knowledge, Dorothy Donahue helps people get grounded and motivated, inspired and energized. It's not just words and affirmations and the power of intention. It's a mindset brought about by a tangible, transcendental experience, an audiovisual, physical, spiritual experience that helps us realize we transform ourselves. We get tools to become the conscious co-creators of lives of unlimited potential. Find out more. Go to DorothyDonahue.com. Life Changes with Filippo is a premier radio show presented by Life Changes Network, which is a company whose team has dedicated their lives not only to positive change, but to helping others observe and embrace, honor, and even celebrate their own changes, thus enabling a more positive, inspired life and helping to create a more positive and inspired world. From everyday people to corporate giants, celebrities, and children, we are here to help and to serve. With heart and experience, we bring our message and positive intent into your home or corporate office and even through appearances on your favorite shows. If you wish to learn more about Life Changes Life Coaching and a private consultation with one of us, corporate event appearances, or if you would like us to appear on your radio or TV shows, visit LifeChangesWithFilippo.com and click on our representation page. What is the one thing that every man, woman, and child have in common? Life Changes. Are you experiencing change at home, at work, at school, or in other areas of your life? Are you looking to make a change, maybe a new job or place to live? How about getting in on a conversation that matters? Join host Filippo on the top-rated BBS radio network show, Life Changes with Filippo, live every Monday night at 7 p.m. For more information, visit lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O dot com. I am Filippo, and we're back with uh, Mark Lejeur and the Producers Wrap after a great conversation with Christina Fior. You know what I was thinking of, and I'm glad you ended up there, is the fact that it's, it's great that she wrote this book and how she's empowering women with that perspective, but it's so a, a, a male issue as well, right? It's not gender specific. Yeah. And But what's even more interesting is I, I think it's even more of a challenge because we're not brought up that way we're brought up competitively we're brought up to toughen up we're brought up to not cry we're brought up to so loving yourself talking to yourself in the mirror you know accepting yourself all of those things on the heels of uh i go back to the you know kind of my frame of reference is the way we're programmed um to you know to to look back at, at episodes that create situations where you 
disconnect or you, you step back from, from your appreciation of yourself. You know, that embarrassing moment in middle school when something happened and, and you were laughed at and, and maybe it was, you know, you, your look or your actions or the way you walked or whatever the case may be. Or you peed your pants. Or you peed your pants again. Um, <laughs> But, but the, <laughs> could have been the first time and last time. <laughs> but but any of these types of things create an imprint, and that imprint then is reflective in your perspective, in your self perspective for the rest of your freaking life. For the life. rest of your life. So yeah. every time you look in the mirror, or you see yourself, or you hear you right, you, I don't like. I I refuse to sing. Why? Because you don't like the way you sound. I just or, heard that yesterday from a seventy year old man. There you go. 70 years old, he's doing a big event for his 70th birthday party, and I invited him to consider performing. And he said, when I was, uh, whenever he was bar mitzvah, 11 years old, when I was bar mitzvah, they told me I shouldn't sing the, the, the Torah or whatever, because I don't have a voice, and that's been haunting me ever since. And I said, well, sorry to bring it up 60 something years later but evidently it didn't go far away yeah and it never does it doesn't until you are in a place to uh to change until you're either looking at these things yourself or until someone else like you did brings it forward but but i think also there's an, an interesting uh perspective from the fact that she was talking about our male and our female selves yeah. And I think part of what's going on with this shift in consciousness that we're experiencing is th- there's only one self. Mm. We're integrating mm. this male and female self. Yeah. And yet we're doing so within a confined set of rules that were the parameters that were set up in that duality of male, female, blue, pink. You know, right. uh, uh, you know, this right. is the way we do things, uh, spice and uh, whatever the, the, the juxtapositions are of, yeah. of how we're brought up, right? So then to integrate those, to accept those and to realize that, that that is the f- place to start in healing is, uh, is a little bit of a journey because it's foreign. A little bit of a journey. It's a huge journey. Well, first of all, I have to say that I, I would have been happy to make this just a, a, a woman's issue. It's a woman's book and I, we could have just stuck to, you know, the woman's perspective. But I, in talking to Christina in, in reading the book, I could see that there was, there was actually a balance here that, that is so often overlooked. And so I, I, I loved being able to bring in those aspects like I did during the monologue and throughout the show. So I, I, I thought it was great to have that opportunity to do that. But, you know, Mark, it, you know, think about a day when, uh, I don't know how many years ago this might have been, maybe 80 years ago, where let's just say the, the man was outside farming the crops with a hoe. I mean, you know, I mean like a, a tool, <laughs> not... Not a, a, okay, so we can't go there, especially on a woman's, okay, so, so he's with, okay, with a rake. I'm gonna let you with, your, <laughs> with a hoe, with, with a rake. shovel, cause with you're gonna have to shovel. dig yourself out okay, of Okay, he's got a shovel and he's, he's trying to grow crops. And the woman is at home, she might have uh, three children who are babies still, she's, she's cooking the crops that, that, you know, that come in, she's cleaning the house, she's doing all this stuff, and, and they live out there, uh, out in the prairie by themselves, and the nearest neighbor is blah, blah, blah. You know, you don't expect the woman to say to the man, I'm not feeling, uh, um, you know, appreciated, or you don't expect the man to say, you know, when I was a child, my dad did, but there isn't that time. I, I can't imagine when, when, by the time he gets in and they eat and, and she has to clean up and he has to do whatever he has to do, like put the cows and horses away. I don't know. They, they're bush. They're, they're dead to the world. They go to sleep and start over in the morning. You don't talk about that stuff. It's a pure function, uh, the functionality of being brought up in duality, in separation. When you're operating from that place of not even considering the idea of being connected with each other, much less with yourself you know, on a greater whole and, and looking at your, you know, um, your place in the universe, then yeah, it, it, right. You're, you're solidly in ego. So it's all about the events of that day. Is the food ready when you get home? You know, is, is the appreciation given for the food and the work that went into preparing that food, right? There's this whole dance of, Mm -hmm. of how everything else relates to me 
rather than how I relate to myself and then how that affects everything else. Yeah, and you know, though, Mark, though that example, um, it works, take it, take it to today. I mean, for, for, for those of us who, who have air conditioned places to live and, and have a certain comforts and a, a certain friends and, and we have certain jobs where we have, we, we are able to focus on some of these things, but, but maybe the people who have to work uh, to you know, three jobs to put food on the table and keep a roof over their head. Maybe they don't have time for that. Well, no, they don't have time, or don't know how to make time, or don't know that in order to make that whole um, um, process of living better, that they need to invest into that time. That's part of the, the problem. Is that we, we we weren't brought up understanding this or knowing it. We're so we're we're beginning to learn it. Uh, but it's it's certainly. I mean, look at the state of the world today, right? Uh, there's a there's a whole lot of fighting going on, and there's a whole lot of fighting to keep the material stuff we have, and and you know everything is uh, uh, there's a lot of struggle. Uh, so this is thing. You know, this is something that's having to be learned and introduced, and and in essence accepted. You know, it's part of the reprogramming. Yeah. Uh, but I want to go back for just a second because there's another thing that 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 Christina mentioned, which I thought was interesting because we talk a lot, which I think. All of these are aspects or facets of, of one diamond, one truth, which is authentic living or your authentic self. Yeah. And so that self-love is accepting who you are, all of who you are, and seeing the perfection in that. And and I, I know she was mentioning the, uh, you know, being perceived as, as arrogant, um, in, you know, in, in terms of, but yeah, maybe. I was of, the one that brought that, that up, actually, up. So, yeah. So, so. What came to me, and I, I wanted to mention it because we've spoken on this topic before, but I, I really think it's an interesting um, thought that comes up from that, is if you are not in an authentic place, if you are vibrating with doubt or mm. fear or mm. a lack of self-acceptance, and then you try to coat that and package that with some bravado that would seem like you're... Right. You're confident and everything is cool. We as vibrational beings are feeling yeah. the discord. Right. We're, Cause you're, you're vibrating a collective vibration There's that includes yep. those other feelings. Whereas those people that come across the Richard Bransons of the world, you know, that come across, yeah, it's not about the money. There's a certain peace and centeredness mm. that they exude. Um, and it, and it may be just the you know your 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 neighborhood you, you know your neighbor in, in your your neighborhood that has that same but there's a peaceful quiet serene confidence that is much different than the really let me tell you how confident I am <laughs> attitude that comes <laughs> right. across which you know has those other uh, notes that are vibrating along with it. Well, so speaking of notes, that's a really good note. To end on, this has been this has been great. I uh, thank Christina Fior for being on the show with us. I want to thank uh, Dorothy Donahue and Elizabeth England actually for bringing her to us. Um, Dorothy Donahue for putting this all together. Mark Lejeur for co-hosting and and our engineer Doug Newson. This is Filippo Voltaggio with Life Changes with Filippo saying to you: Remember, as life changes, we're there for you. Ciao, everyone. You have been listening to Life Changes with Filippo with the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Listen live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the BBS Radio Network and visit us online at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Today's show has been made possible in part by our sponsors, Ionways Water Systems, Change Your Water, Change Your Life, and Love and Miracles with Dorothy Lee Donahue. To learn more about them, visit the sponsor page of our website. Once again, join us here next week as we consciously explore and embrace the only constant, life changes. Change the world. Change the world.